to smoke that. God says, that's all I need. Come on. I'm not strong, God said, no problem. Just give me a bruise ring. And he said, I'm going to bring forth victory with those things. Clear the judgment. Come on. If you're weak, you need to thank God because then you will lean on your own strength. Woo. Come on, son. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God's just looking for a little tendril. Amen. Hallelujah. Of smoke. Praise God. Because where there's smoke, there can be fire. Yes. And he said, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it already be kindled? God has kindled a fire, but he wants to. You know what God wants to do? He, when he sees somebody on fire, he says, I want to drop about 500 black cats on that youth group. Guy. And all of a sudden, this is going crazy. And people are going. Woo. Come on, somebody. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. I got to stop. I'm going to stop. I've got enough discipline to stop. Because I have another preacher. Now, if I didn't have another preacher, we'd just go on. Hallelujah. I'm mean, thankful we have a preacher. And finally, we have his wife. Amen. And it uh, looks like all of the, amen, little Soras are doing, amen, better. Amen. And uh, we prayed for them. Amen. And it's so good to have her with us. Praise God. He says you play the trombone. You don't? You told us. She played the trombone, but it was a lot. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> we knew he was kidding. So we want you to stand and tell. This is a sweet woman. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He must have been treating her right for her to still be this sweet, brother. Hallelujah. Testify, sister. Yes. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And it's so good to have her with us. Praise God. Amen. We're here to have church. How many here to have church? Brother Thor, we want you to come. Now we know he can blow the trumpet. Come. How many ready for a clear and certain sound? Is that the trumpet given us? A certain sound who can prepare themselves for war. So when the trumpet sound, they said, hey, we're ready to, we're going to run for the truth. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Take your minutes tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody feeling good here tonight. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Charles was talking about black cats, and there was a memory that came back to my mind of uh, New Year's Eve in Independence, Kansas, years ago. I don't even know if my parents know this story. I might have gotten in trouble, but <laughs> but uh, uh oh. One of my friends, he got about, I don't remember how many black cats or whatever they call those long deals, little firecrackers, and, and he tied like 30, 40, 50 of them together until we had like a, a 50 long train. <laughs> and we went to a, a senior citizen type neighborhood. This is bad. Oh my God. 
and it's like two in the morning and we set them off we set it off on the far end of the train and i ran with my friend with the front of it and we must have ran at least two blocks before it got close to our hands and it sounded like a war zone i'm telling you it's there's no telling what those poor old people must have been. They probably just heard the news that there's missiles and, and things going off in Afghanistan and Syria. They said it's done come to Kansas out of nowhere. Hallelujah. Hey, when you get a bunch of things together like that, you get some praisers together. You get some worshipers together. Hallelujah. You don't need a whole lot, but we need what you got. <laughs> You don't have to have a whole lot, but you got to use what you got. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and praise Him tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I feel victory in the house of God here tonight. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. I feel like going back to Psalms 23 tonight, if that's okay. We'll go a little different direction with it. I don't know if I could get just a little more monitor. Just a little bit. Some of you about to preach me to death last night. Psalms 23, we know that it talks about the benefits. Everybody say benefits, benefits. of the path of righteousness. I want to read real quick. Let's read about those benefits on the path of righteousness. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I wonder if anybody brought the overflow from last night to tonight's service. Amen. Anybody enjoying the path of righteousness here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want to focus on verse 6, the last verse of this chapter. David said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. I want to tell you, you got something following you. And it's called goodness and mercy. It will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody shout forever. forever. I want to preach tonight, goodness and mercy is on my heels. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell him, goodness and mercy is on your heels. You don't have to have high heels on to say that to your neighbor. But <laughs> hey, if you came barefooted, mercy is still after you tonight too. Goodness and mercy is following you. It's after you. It's in hot pursuit of you. Oh, we don't understand how good God is to us. Why don't we throw our hands in the air and thank God for goodness and mercy. Thank you for goodness and mercy. Thank you for goodness and mercy. Oh, God, I don't deserve it. I thank you. You've been so... Come on, let's thank Him. Come on, if you understood how good God is and how merciful. Oh, if we really knew how merciful He is, we'd be praising Him right now. Let's praise Him for His mercy right now. None of us would be here without the mercy of God. None of us would be in this sanctuary without the mercy of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Look, come on, that's it. Let's thank Him for His mercy. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for forgiveness. 
Thank God for mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Tell somebody there's something chasing you tonight. God bless you. You can be seated. David loved the paths of righteousness. He loved to walk with God. He loved to pray and he loved to write songs and he was anointed to play stringed instruments and he was anointed to sing and he was anointed to write all kinds of different hymns and songs that we sing in our churches today with probably a little twist on it. But David loved to walk with God. He loved to be clean and pure. He was a man after God's own heart. He was chasing after God. He loved the righteousness of God. Amen. But there were times in David's life that he strayed from the path of righteousness. Amen. There was times that he found himself off of the path, straying from the path. When his flesh got the better of him, when he made a mistake, uh, times that he stumbled and fell. And he found himself in a place of unrighteousness. And he was not on that path of the righteousness of God. And uh, there, there's a lot of different things we could get into in David's life if we wanted to nitpick. Man, I, I'm glad everybody don't know everything about me and they could just nitpick everything. But anyway, we could really try to nitpick every flaw of David. But I just want to focus on a couple of main instances in David's life. Where he strayed from the path of righteousness. One of those instances that most of us are familiar with. Is when he had numbered the people as a king. And uh, he had uh, gone against the commandment and the law of God. By numbering the people. Another main instance where David strayed from the path of righteousness. Was in the matter of Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. Everybody know about that story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, David made some mistakes and he strayed from righteousness. But David found out when he made a mistake and he messed up. He found out that goodness and mercy was following him. I wonder if anybody here has ever found that out yet. That when you stray, when you stumbled, when your flesh got the better of you. You found out that there was something chasing you and following you and hot on your trail. And it was the goodness and mercy of God. David found out that mercy follows me into my mistakes. Mercy follows me into my carnality. The goodness and mercy of God follows me into foolishness. The scripture talks about uh, when David had numbered the people and he had stumbled, he had fallen that God gave him three options. One of those options for punishment and consequence was that there would be seven years of famine. One of the options was that there would be three months where the enemies would come against him. And one of the, the third option was that there would be three days of pestilence from the hand of God upon the people. And David made this statement. He said, let us now fall into the hand of the Lord for his mercies somebody say mercies his mercies are great and let me not fall into the hand of men hallelujah mercy was after him David found out in his mistake and we read where God began to send pestilence but David prayed and cried out to God and God removed that judgment and mercy was hot on David's trail hallelujah <laughs> The story of Bathsheba where David, uh, he stole Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, and he had Uriah killed in the battlefield. Not only did he uh, steal, but he found himself guilty of killing. And, and here he is. David's not right. He's straight from righteousness. He's removed himself from the path of righteousness. But God was on his heels. Goodness and mercy was after him. And Nathan the prophet, the man of God, came to, to David to bring him a word. The word that Nathan the prophet brought was a word of judgment. Just stay awake for a few minutes, all right. It was a word of judgment. It was a word of conviction. It was a word of consequence. It was a word of condemnation. It was a word of guilt. 
It was a word of shame, but I want to tell you, it was also a word of mercy. Anytime you hear a word of judgment and God deals with you, don't you forget, it's not just a word of judgment, it's a word of mercy. And so the word of mercy came to David through Nathan the prophet, and God was speaking to him and saying, David, you're not right with me, but I'm chasing after you. You're not where you need to be, but David, I'm bringing you a word of mercy to get it right, to make it right. David, you need to repent. You need to build an altar. You need to get back to the paths of righteousness. You need to get back to green pastures. Are you with me? You need to get back to steel waters. You need to get back to where your cup runneth over. You need to get back to where there's an anointing up on your head. You need to get back, David, to where you were a man after my own heart. You need to get back to the place where you were anointed when you used to write songs and you used to pray and you used to dance before the Lord and you used to worship and you used to have purity and cleanness. You need to get back to where your heart was pure and clean and and there was no sin in your life, David. Hallelujah. You need to get back to that place. Goodness and mercy is chasing after David's hills. You can be seated a minute. Hang with me. Hallelujah. Yes, there is consequence. We know that I'm not come to preach some feel-good message that there's no consequence in sin. Yes, David had consequence. We know that David and Bathsheba's child died. We know that Absalom fought against David the rest of his days, the rest of Absalom's days as punishment for his sin. Yes, there is consequence, but I want to tell you, the goodness and mercy of God keeps chasing us anyhow. Yes, there is pain. Yes, there is responsibility. Yes, there is consequence, but the goodness and mercy keeps chasing after us anyhow. Hallelujah. We know that David repented and he turned around from his sin and he embraced. Somebody shout embrace. He embraced the mercy of God. David didn't keep running away. David didn't try to hide from it. Hallelujah. The scripture says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. And so David obtained mercy. He received mercy. He embraced mercy. Hallelujah. I like the scripture that says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hallelujah. We got to get our hands on the mercy of God. We got to obtain it. We got to get a hold of it. Come on. Some people view the mercy of God as something that's just floating out there. And it's just going to cover everybody's sin. That's not how the mercy of God works. It's not just floating out there and it just covers everybody. You have to obtain it. You've got to turn away from your sin. You've got to turn away from unrighteousness. You've got to turn away from uncleanness and open up your arms. Come on, goodness and mercy is on your heels. It's chasing you. But you have to turn away from sin. And you've got to open your arms and obtain the mercy of God. Can I preach that the fact that God is merciful is not going to save anybody. The fact that goodness and mercy is on your heels, it's not going to save anybody. But somewhere you've got to turn around and embrace. Woo! You've got to get a hold of it. You've got to get your hands on it. You've got to get mercy moving. Oh, I like it when mercy starts moving in my heart. And it starts moving in my soul. And there's forgiveness of sin. And there's restoration to God. Clap your hands, somebody. Let's give him praise. Oh, help me, Jesus. You can be seated. When mercy is embraced, there is a transportation. Woo, man, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. God's going to help us. 
Hallelujah. When you're on the path of righteousness, you're living for God and it's a good path. But then you stray and you get somewhere mixed up way over here. But mercy's on your heels and it's chasing after you and it's reaching for you. When you finally decide to turn around and embrace mercy, I'm glad that God doesn't make us walk through all the junk that he doesn't make us retrace all of our steps. Come on, are you with me today? And if you strayed from God for three months, God doesn't make you retrace all your steps for three months to get back to righteousness. But when you turn around, brother, when you get a hold of the mercy of God, there's an instant transportation that you get moved from here to here in the blink of an eye, in a moment. Come on, somebody. Come on, God knows how to deliver people out of sin. God knows how to remove... Come Come on, God wants to move somebody. He wants to transition you out of iniquity into the path of righteousness. Come on, God will move you tonight. He'll transport you tonight. He'll take you there in a moment's time. You can be seated. I'm going to preach in a minute. We're just warming up. David always hasted. Somebody say hasted. He always hasted back to the path of righteousness, Brother Charles. In his mistakes, he didn't linger in unrighteousness and sin. But when goodness and mercy was chasing him and, and he would turn around and embrace that mercy, he would haste back to the path of righteousness. Let me bring a couple scriptures to you real quick. In the matter where David had numbered the people and he had fallen, the Bible says this, and David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly and that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. David didn't relax in sin, but, but there was an urgency. There was a hastening in his heart. I got to get back to righteousness. I got to get back to God. Hallelujah. And in the matter of Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite, we all, most of us know Psalms chapter 51. It was after Nathan the prophet came to him that, that David, goodness and mercy was after David. And goodness and mercy grabbed him by the heels. And David turns around and he begins to pray the prayer of Psalms 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God. Anybody heard that? According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. He goes on to pray all kinds of stuff, but he does say this. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And he also says this, cast me not away from thy, holy pre from thy presence. Take not thine holy spirit from me. Hallelujah. David did not relax and get comfortable in his sin, but he responded with urgency. I want to preach tonight. Hallelujah. The stupidest thing somebody could do is not make a mistake. Oh, I hope I'll make sense here tonight. The most foolish thing you could do is not make a mistake. The stupidest thing somebody could do is not stumble or fall or make a foolish decision. But the stupidest thing somebody could do is to refuse and resist the mercy of God. When it's on your child. Oh, are you going to help me preach here tonight? Come on. The most foolish thing somebody could do is when they're in sin and goodness and mercy is after them. It's on their heel. It's chasing them. The most foolish thing you could ever do is refuse the mercy of God and keep on running and keep on trying to escape. Come on, you need to turn around. You need to open, open up your arms. There's a God in heaven that loves you. Come on, there's a God in heaven that's after you. He wants to see you saved. He wants to see you set free. He wants to see you restored. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. God's following you in your carnality. He's following you in your sin. He's hot on your trail. He's stalking you. You can't escape the mercy of God. 
If I sin, somebody's starting to quote my preaching already. If I ascend into the heavens, God's there. He's after me. He's working on me. If I make my bed in hell, he's still after me. If I try to escape to the uttermost part of the seas, he's still after me. If I try to get in some place of darkness, maybe I know you still can't hide from him. Goodness and mercy is still on your trail, brother. Because God don't want you to be lost. He's not willing that any should perish. Come on, God's not willing that any should perish. But that all, all, all would come to repentance. Come on, goodness and mercy. It's following me. It's after me. It's chasing me. I'm telling you, people start straying. They start wandering from righteousness. And God starts stalking them and chasing them and reaching for them. I, I hope I'll prove it in Scripture later. I'm just preaching right now. But I'm telling you, God follows us into our sins. We'll get there if you don't believe me yet. But God follows us into iniquity. He keeps reaching for us. And He keeps tugging on us and pulling on us. And you know what? I believe God showed me something in some of those thoughts and that is that, you know, it takes a made-up mind to really backslide. Right. 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 <laughs> Woo! Because goodness and mercy is going to be hot on your trail. Goodness and mercy is going to be grabbing, kind of like those annoying dogs that just yip and yap and grab at your heels. Come on, goodness and mercy, it gets after us, it follows us, uh, and it starts yanking on our heels and pulling on us and fall. And I've seen it, I've seen grew up in the church. I've got friends that are out of the church today that I was very close with. But I've seen it when they started making up their mind to backslide. It seemed like every visiting preacher that would come through, it's like there was a custom made message for that one individual. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on somebody. When somebody starts straying, when somebody starts going astray, you know what the goodness and mercy of God does? It starts giving you custom made service. Has anybody ever had a service that was custom made just for you? Woo! Oh, I'm telling you, man, I could go down memory lane right now. I could go down memory lane right now. And I could start telling you about services that were custom made for me when I was going astray. You know why? Because goodness and mercy, it's going to follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell in a house... Come on, I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to leave the church. Oh, I wish somebody would praise him right now for his mercy. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his compassion. It's going to take a whole lot of resistance to leave the church. It's going to take your face being set like a flint because goodness and mercy is going to reach for you. Come on. There's going to be a song. When you said it's your last service, Sister Charles, somebody's going to sing a song and it's going to smite your heart. And good, come on, goodness and mercy is going to get a hold of your heels and try to pull back. And come on, don't go there. Don't leave it. Come on. Is anybody thankful for goodness and mercy here tonight? If it wasn't for the goodness and mercy of God, where would I be tonight? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Man, oh man, I got excited today. I was praying and God just dropped this thought into my heart. I'm glad to be living in the dispensation of grace. Hallelujah. We're in the dispensation of grace and mercy right now. It's the church age. It's when God's preparing a bride. It's when God is putting more His mercy out on the face of the earth. Come on. This is the dispensation of grace. For which sin does abound, the grace of God does much. Woo! Come on, somebody. Come on, we're living in a day that mercy still rejoices against judgment. 
Come on, we're living in a day that the mercy of God is rich. Oh, I thank God I'm living in this dispensation, hallelujah, where the Lord is slow to anger, but he's plenteous in mercy, hallelujah. I'm glad to be living in the day that our God is pitiful. The New Testament says that our Lord is very pitiful and he's of tender mercies, hallelujah. Oh, thank God for him. Are you glad to be living in this dispensation? You know, this is the best time to be alive. I'm glad I wasn't under the law. I'm glad I was. Come on, somebody. I'm glad I wasn't under. Come on, I'm under grace. I'm under mercy. Oh, I still believe the blood of Jesus is flowing like it's never flowed before. It still reaches to the highest mountain. Do you believe that? The blood of Jesus, the mercy of God still flows to the lowest valley. Yes. Come on, the lowest valleys of sin, the lowest valleys of shame, the lowest valleys of regret, the lowest valleys of wickedness, the lowest places of perversion. Come on, the blood of Jesus is still flowing. Come on, it's a dispensation of grace, brother. It's time to wake up, turn around. Embrace the mercy of God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that says, What does the Lord require of thee but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? Amen. Man, that doesn't seem like too much of a challenge. I don't know about you, but it's real easy for me to love mercy. When you read the first part of that verse, you're thinking, man, the Lord requires this. This is going to be a little bit tough. But it just says, love mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's pretty easy, isn't it? I love the mercy of God. How about you? It's not that, that come on, God's merciful. He's kind. He's long-suffering. He gives us mercy. His mercies are made new every morning. Yes, hallelujah. Come on, his mercy never gets old and stale. It never dries up. But every time the sun comes up in the morning, you've got some new mercy on your heels. It's chasing you. Come on, when you, when you get off your bed in the morning, it don't matter if you're walking into foolishness. It don't matter if you're in rebellion. It don't matter what in the world you're involved in. When you get off your bed in the morning, you start walking. Hey, goodness and mercy is following you, brother. It's chasing you. It's trying to reach you. It's trying to stir you. It's trying to wake you up. It's trying to shake you. Come on, you can't escape it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want a scripture up here. Let's see. I had it memorized earlier. I forgot. Micah 7, 18. Let's get Micah 718 real quick. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Hallelujah. When people start going astray and they're in sin, you would think that God would say, I'm not walking there. I'm not chasing them in that. I don't want to be around that mess. No, he passeth by the transgression. And he keeps after us. He's on our heels. Hallelujah. 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 He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Hallelujah. Come on. God passeth by our transgression. He follows us. He chases us. He's after us, bro. Hallelujah. Can I preach about Lot for a minute? Lot, he, he went into Sodom and Gomorrah. But goodness and mercy was on his heels. Goodness and mercy followed Lot into Sodom. Goodness and mercy followed Lot into sin. He followed Lot into perversion. Goodness and mercy followed Lot into corruption. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, it did. Amen. And it came to the point where judgment was going to come. And Lot still wasn't waking up. He still wasn't embracing the mercy of God. And the Bible says while he lingered, God was still merciful to him while he was lingering. You know what? God will still follow us into our laziness. 
When you're just lingering and you're just being lazy and there's apathy and indifference, God's still following you. Come on, when you're just sitting around like a bump on a log not doing, God's still on your heels, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it was only the goodness and mercy of God that spared Lot's daughters when those evil men started coming against the door of the house, trying to beat the door down, trying to violate Lot. Amen. And Lot was willing to throw his innocent daughters out there to be violated by those evil men. But goodness and mercy was on his heels and goodness and mercy was there to protect his daughters. The goodness and mercy of God was there to protect Lot's house. The goodness and mercy of God was there, amen, to blind, to smite the men at the door with blindness. The goodness and mercy of God was there when the angels took Lot by the hand and said, come on, we're going to drag you out of this city. Lord, I'm telling you the goodness and mercy of God. It'll follow you to the drugs. It'll follow you to the movie theaters. I'm not telling you to go there. I'm not telling you to get involved in that. But I'm preaching to you that God loves you. He cares about you. And you can't run away from him. You can't escape him. You can't hide from him. Because he wants to see you saved. Hallelujah. I believe that God hunts down and chases down and stalks his chosen vessels. Man, what time is it? <laughs> Last night it was 10 o'clock out in the foyer and I said, man, I'm, I must have went too long. And they said, oh no, well, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But they said, oh no, Brother Charles preaches a long time on Wednesday night. Now I won't tell you him who said that. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you the goodness and mercy of God follows the chosen vessels <laughs> hallelujah amen when Saul of Tarsus he had letters in his hands to bind men and women and cast them into prison because they preached the truth that we preach here tonight. and he was breathing out slaughterings I don't know what that means I just uh, sometimes I read that and I think he's just breathing like a monster just as he's walking to Damascus. <laughs> anyway, kill everybody. Man, new converts are fun. There was a guy in my home church. He was so on fire for God. He didn't know nothing about the Bible. He was reading it all day and he's getting all the stories mixed up. <laughs> he testified one night with a cow. He said, you know, I was reading about when the Apostle Paul was on the road to democracy. <laughs> He said, wow. <laughs> and then he talked about the upper room in 2 Samuel or something like that. Oh, that makes church fun, doesn't it? Hallelujah. But you see, Saul of Tarsus was a chosen vessel. He wasn't reaching for God. He wasn't seeking God. He was in corruption. He was, in, he was an evil man. He was a, a violent man. But he was a chosen vessel. And goodness and mercy was on his heels. Following him. After him. Until the day that God smote him down with blindness. And said, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And then God starts speaking to Ananias across the way. And he says, hey, I want you to go out and meet this man named Saul. And, and Ananias says, man, I, what in the world? He's a mean man. He's a violent man. I don't want to talk to him. I hide behind the tree when he walks by my house. Uh, but God said, no, he's a chosen vessel unto me. I'm telling you, you know why you're in the church? Uh, you're a chosen vessel tonight. Uh, and goodness and mercy found you. Oh, brother, seeing goodness and mercy was on your trail. Because you were a chosen vessel. Brother, Nick, goodness and mercy was on your trail. Because you were a chosen vessel. Hallelujah. I forgot your name, young lady. But goodness and mercy was on her trail. Because she was a chosen. Come on, somebody. You are a chosen generation. You're a royal priest. Come on, I wish somebody get excited and... Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Amen. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, if God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, goodness and mercy found you. You shouldn't be in the church today. Come on, the odds were against you. You shouldn't even know about Acts 2.38. But goodness and mercy said that's a chosen vessel right there. Come on, I'm after them. I'm after their heels. Come on, God's a heel grabber. He's a foot grabber. Come on, he's reaching. He's pulling. He's reaching for your heel. Hallelujah. Anybody saved? Amen. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 Goodness and mercy is on my heels. It's after me. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy followed Jonah when he fled. Man, I better just wrap this thing up. This one wants to come to the music. Jonah fled. Is that what the Bible said? He fled from the presence of the Lord. Oh, God. Come on, brother. Jonah was on the path of righteousness. He was walking with God. He was a man after God's heart. God spoke to him. But he fled from the path of righteousness. Hallelujah. But goodness and mercy was on his heels. Is that right? Amen. Come on. Ooh, come on. God's not going to just let you go to hell. If you're lost... It's because you rejected God time and time and time again. Goodness and mercy was after Jonah. It was goodness and mercy that brought a storm to his life. Hallelujah. Thank God for storms. Some people mistake storms for the judgment of God. It's the mercy of God that sends storms. Come on. That God will turn our world upside down. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy prepared a great fish to swallow him. Jonah should have drowned. He should have died. But goodness and mercy was hot on his trail. It was following him. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jonah begins. He finally turns around. Man, it's amazing how far people will run from God. It's amazing how long and how far people will run from God. I, I don't, I'm not perfect, don't misunderstand me, but I don't want to know what it's like to run from God for years. Man, I've seen backsliders come back and testify and talk about how they cried almost every day and they were miserable and they thought about the church every day and they had memories every day, every week, every month. I don't want to live like that. Amen. Jonah ran and ran and ran and ran, but finally in the belly of the whale, mercy was still there. And he finally turns around. And he embraces, he obtains mercy. Hallelujah. And God transported him back to the path of righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. The goodness and mercy of God prepared his safety. He should have drowned. He should have died. I'm telling you, there's people in their rebellion and their sin. God is protecting you. He's preparing protection against car wrecks. I'm telling you, none of us really know what the goodness and mercy of God has kept us from. Come on. I wonder how many of us have been driving somewhere we shouldn't, doing something we shouldn't. Right. And something bad could have happened. But even in our sin, even in our mistakes, the mercy of God prepared the deliverance. The mercy of God prepared the protection. Because mercy is chasing us and reaching us. And God wants us to come back to the house of the Lord. Oh, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Man, I could just keep on preaching, but I'll just bore you to death. We could talk about Jacob. We could talk about all kinds of people in their lying deception that God appeared to them and spoke to them and said, I want to bless you. I want to touch you. Turn around. Open your arms. Come on, embrace the mercy of God. Oh, you got to obtain it. You got to get a hold of it. Come on, I wouldn't play with it. I wouldn't play. Thank God it's there when I need it, but I don't want to play with it. Thank God it's there. I wouldn't be here without it. Oh, God. Come on, goodness and mercy is following you. It's following you. It's chasing you. Come on, it's after you on a Friday night at midnight when you know you shouldn't be. Come on, it's still, it's chasing you. It's reaching you. Oh, the goodness and mercy of God shall follow me all the days of my life. Come on, let's raise our hands all over this place. Oh, I need mercy. I need mercy. I need the mercy of God. I need the blood of Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, anybody thankful for His mercy that found you? I'm telling you, you're a chosen vessel. God has plans to bless you. He has plans to prosper you. He has plans to use you in the kingdom. Come on, God finds His chosen vessels. He chases chosen vessels. He reaches for chosen vessels. I need mercy. I need mercy. I gotta have mercy. Oh God, my my flesh is so sinful. Oh my righteousness is as filthy rags. Oh God, I'm gonna stumble. I'm gonna fall. I need mercy. Oh God, come on. We need to hasten. We need to hasten to the mercy of God. Oh God, I'm hastening. Come on, let's reach out. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, we need to press in. Let's bind together. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel restoration now. Oh, there's restoration in this house. I need your hand. Come on, somebody needs God here tonight. Oh, I wonder if somebody run to this altar. Oh, I wonder if somebody run to this altar and embrace the mercy of God. Oh. Come on, I don't care what you did last week. I don't matter what you did last night. It don't matter. Goodness and mercy is after you, brother. Goodness and mercy is chasing you. Goodness and mercy is in hot pursuit. Goodness and mercy is reaching. Goodness and mercy is chasing you. Come on, don't run. 